Hey there, Phil and Brady and all the rest of you people. Um, name's Richard or just Struppi. And I just wanted to send you this little video because I just rewatched um, Professor Moriarty's, Moriarty's um, videos on entropy. And on the last one, which is the most recent one, the one about, uh, I think, confusions about entropy, um, he showed a computer model that some other group of scientists made of little so spheres bouncing around in a box and increasing their order. And all I wanted to do now is to... Um, to give you a little insight into synergetics, um, which is a science of uh, de developed and discovered, discovered and developed by Buckminster Fuller, Richard Buckminster Fuller, and I've been studying that with the help of my cat for a while. And uh, yeah, synergetics is a is a science that um, re revisited all the axioms that people take for granted about the way that order and space are manifest and the the classical axioms of of the greek geometers um well they are common sense apparently but they do not make any sense in a rational way because they are all based on uh, imagining imagination abstractions that do not really get the point of what things are about and on the other hand synergetics is very much empirical and operational mathematics so all you do is look at behavior of reality and describe that and there is a significant number of generalized principles that synergetics discloses that explain about um, about the behavior of things so without further ado what I wanted to do just a quick note in between if you're interested in this you Fuller wrote a great book called Synergetics and a few mo like this videos of him talking about this um, but there's really two books or really very much one book that I would recommend for everyone to get a, a first glimpse into this, which is called uh, A Fuller Explanation, The Synergetic Geometry of Richard Buckminster Fuller by Amy C. Edmondson. Now this camera is the wrong side around. I hope that doesn't make a, your head spin. And the other book, which is quite recent, is this one pattern thinking by daniel lopez Perez? really great book uh, but none of the books really um really re replaces the the need to play to play with things to really get a, a grip of about the reality we live in so what i want to show you is a model kind of related to the one that you did with your um, with your balls there the, both the, the, the soccer balls or whatever they were and the little plastic balls that were running off your table for a good reason um, and what I would like to show you is wh how the framework that you put around all that all those um, all those descriptions really really matters now if you put your mind back to that video or look at it again you see how you try to order the the spheres on your table in a in a kind of, kind of a square pattern like um square boxes as well as the the box in a computer simulation that contained all the moving spheres which also was just a box a rectangular bo box 
And that is part of the big problem because all our common sense and our minds are very much in, uh, focused on l squaring the world and putting everything into boxes where there really is no empirical proof for boxes to exist, which is a topic for another conversation and another video. What I want to show you is just a simple model to that helps me playing with synergetics because I make a lot of lots of these things like little ones like these that's out of focus but also I don't know if you can see that bigger ones like that or that or even that or even those out there really big ones because size is irrelevant uh, for the principles to apply so now what helps me to to count parts it's, it's twofold first thing is I count dozenal because all synergetic geometry is based on dozens dozens and half dozens so it makes a lot of sense and it con the, the, the numbers contain a lot more information if you take them in a dozenal context instead of a decimal and the other thing is I often work with with beats that are spherical and to count a large number of them what I do is I, I made a table of um, tetrahedral numbers where well tetrahedral that's another thing I would call them tetra optical but let's talk about that in another on another go so that's the number of um, spheres that you stack together in the closest packing that give you a tetrahedron and the, the, f the first is one the second is four then comes ten and so on and so forth it's a very certain uh, very defined pattern and how do I use that to my benefit it's really simple look what I got here is just a hexagonal piece of paper I'm gonna try if I can set this up somehow so that I don't need to um, maybe like this. I hope you can still hear me. So this is a hexagonal piece of paper. I got this like that, which is not easy to find, but you could also just take a, a ruler, no, um, a, a compass, make a circle and then repeat making six circles on the circumference to get this by connecting all the, uh, into the, the con conventions, now the, the vertexes of that, the spheres that you draw, the circles. Now what I do is I fold it around the diagonals and then rip it open like this. And I can wind it up like that. Now this is kind of a seed, it contains all the information and by going in here and opening this which is also kind of a bit yeah, some of us may recognize that shape because it's kind of the gateway of life now if we open this up the first stopping point is a tetra what i would call four eyes because yeah never mind tetra um, give it another twist another triangle in there and you got this which people usually see as a pyramid but really what it is is half a, an octa um, I don't know where the next one is I don't never mind half an octa I hope you know how an octa looks like otherwise we need to go back to this another one gives you this which is one corner of an icosa could also make other things like ten eyes pentagonal by pyramid but never mind this is back again at six which gives you a plane which is one plane of the vector equilibrium one plane of space time and then you can fold the other the other way around because space always has two sides and you can go all the way back down but what I want to do now is show you what happens if you make this and use this as your frame frame for 
reference if you work with spheres because they always come together in closest packing based on this so now i got here some spheres some beads and if i put them in here i don't know if you can see that oh i dropped it very good where did you go great now this is how it's supposed to be ah there it is okay once more i drop that sphere in there and what happens is it only settles down in the very tip of this the the position depends a little on the size of the sphere of course okay now if i put in another one two three i got what we can clearly see wow clearly see is a tetrahedron just pointing downwards now if i continue adding spheres in there what we get is a continuous um self-organizing so i'm gonna do this quick and i put you here maybe this works oh, this, I, i'm so sorry i'm not used to recording videos at all especially not in the small room. my phone is too smart no nah Let's see. I'm gonna try like this. Okay. Can you see this? One, two, three, and off they run. Gravity sucks. Here's the four. Now let's just take a bunch of them. Here, a bunch. And we'll drop them in there. And what they do by themselves or as the the Chinese call nature they say nature is by itself so so what happens if we shake this a little is the spheres rest in the place where they are most comfortable which is immediately a tetrahedral configuration and looking at the number of spheres or even the intervals between the spheres, which is the frequency of the thing, tells you how many spheres are in there. So this is four to a to the edge, four spheres. So I think that's thirty-five in total. Now I'm not looking at my table at the moment, which would help because I got a long list of numbers that you get, and then I can just check out how many spheres there are in the in the rows or in the in the corners no the, the edges and then i know how many it contains so if i were to look for that square configuration that you were trying to maintain in those in that box of yours the squares are just a they are a, a consequence of the triangles because all the spheres inter accommodate in a triangular pattern which is four dimensional there's four planes like the four sides of the tetrahedron the vector equilibrium which is 12 spheres around one or any number of spheres closely packed around one because you can increase the frequency adding layers but the the, the first fre frequency vector equilibrium is just 12 spheres around one uh, what I call the mother of mother of spheres and that one is made up of signal of four um, four planes of hexagons if you look the, at the at the vectors the force vectors connecting the centers of the spheres so um, within that within the order of space or let's call it time space because there is no thing as time 
separate from space. So the order of time space in that four dimensional isotropic vector matrix is interrelated by 60 degrees, which I call left angles because we call 90 degrees right angle, why not call 60 degree left angles, which makes talking about these things a bit easier. So within that vector equilibrium and that matrix, the isotropic vector matrix, whenever you have tetras and increase their frequency, you get octas, octo, octahedra as they were called by the Greek, who thought they were solid, but really they are Octa ops or eight eyes, they, they got ice little gaps between the spheres. And even within this, there's a whole bunch of, um, of gaps or in uh, rooms between the spheres which are octahedral or octo octo optical in nature. So the exact, um, the exact wireframe, if you like, of what we got in here is the thing that is up there in, the, in that corner. That's a three frequency tetrahedron, or not hedron, a tra tetrops. And I just wanted to show you this. If I switch from this configuration of the tetra to what I did before, where I opened up the, the paper to that half octa, what happens kind of again by itself is that the spheres in here come together in another configuration. Now this is not a complete layer on the top, obviously. Um, if we remove the top layer here, we'll see just that square pattern, which is really nothing but an irrational cut through th through the IVM, the isotropic vector matrix. You see. So to complete that tetra, uh, no, that octa here, we can just put some spheres back in those uh, there and there 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 and one on the top and we got an octa. Now this is a again the whole thing is made up of the same triangles but you can cut through them in a way that you see all those squares in there because that's part of the nature of space. But yes, um, to really make sense of the world we need to stop working with the, the framework of the cubic understanding of a static universe because it's really, really, really wrong. It's, um, it's based on axioms that cannot be proven. It is actually a, a mistake that the Greeks did because as Buckminster Fuller pointed out, they were not operational. They th they, the geometers of the time, they thought, well, here I got my three tools. I got a, a scribe, a ruler or straight edge and a compass. And that's what I use for my geometry, which means literally the, the metering, the measuring of the earth. Um, but what they forgot in that list of um, tools that they were using was the actual surface they were scribing on, which might be in our days now a paper back then maybe the ground actually the earth or anything and that gives you that taken that into the consideration gives you a very different kind of look at the world because you can't you can't say that a point is without dimensions and a line is uh, how do you say, um, limitless, infinite. You cannot either say that a, a, an area is squared because really area begins with triangles and you can use a square because it's made of at least two triangles to measure um, area. 
and space is not cubic it starts with a tetra and then comes the octa and then the icosa and that's it um, the cube is well I, I could show you other models but this is really going the wrong way <laughs> I, would, I, I wanted to show you that thing with the spheres so um, maybe you can look into that look into synergetics let, at least a little uh, look into maybe try that model just get yourself a piece of paper make a, a circle out of it uh, turn that into a hexagon and fold it so that you get the left angles inside the triangles and try putting in some spheres and see what happens because if life if the world was really about entropy and energy primarily and life was a fight for survival then there wouldn't be any because from the beginning it would have er eradicated itself so it can't be that and what is missing in all those discussions is the looking uh, is looking at synergy at the behavior of whole systems that comes from the connection between the parts so you cannot describe or even analyze it by taking the parts separately because the connections are what matters the links um, yeah so that's just a bunch of thoughts I hope I didn't bore you too much and I hope to hear from you and maybe continue this conversation because I really think this uh, Daniel Lopez Perez puts it very nice in this beautiful book. He says that's, that Fuller's thinking of synergetics is essentially a paradigm shift waiting to happen. And I can tell you I've gone through that paradigm shift. I came from the conventional three-dimensional understanding of the world, which never really resonated completely with me. Um... And then I got into synergetics and now things do make a lot more sense because they do because disorder is an imagination it's just randomness is just not seeing the order because your framework is wrong and yeah maybe just as we are here two little things more one thing is um, looking at um, what was it no I just m missed it lost it again um, uh, oh yeah you know if if were if there's if space was rectangular or cubic even which it can't be which I can show you models for. Um, they're lying over there, and the cat is lying here. I can't get them right now. But try to make a cube that is stable without putting in diagonals. So the idea of a, of a cubic space, imagine you put a cube on the Earth, right? Now what we conventionally do is we assign directions to the to the corners, to the edges of the sphere uh, the, the cube and we say look this cube is made up of some lines that are horizontal and some that are vertical and then we we axiomatically say that those are in parallel respectively which is bullshit because think about how do you measure a vertical you take a string and a weight and where's the weight pointing what we call down which really is into the earth into its center because that's the greatest mass attraction we're closest to now that means if i move around with my string it keeps pointing at the center of the sphere if i move all the way on the other side of the sphere that then it points up which still is in um so every vertical is a radius on a sphere now please go ahead and show me two parallel radii no matter how close they are they will not be parallel the other thing is 
the verti the horizontals how do you measure those with a with a um what do you call them in english uh, oh, oh, a level yeah water level so there's water in the bubble and if you look at water it has that unique seemingly unique tendency to always go to a sphere whether it be a small one and a drop or a sphere with water uh, with air inside like a bubble or a bigger one like a puddle or a lake or an ocean even now how come essentially what we're measuring with the level is just a segment a small tiny segment of a, a very large sphere which is a water sphere around the earth which we're living inside of actually that that kind of air thing around us is an ocean it's just very much less dense than the, than the water underneath our feet now yeah so please go ahead and show me a horizontal that is straight it won't be so horizontals are arc segments of a circle or a sphere and verticals are radii and none of those are parallel and can make us make a cube um, the other thing I just a small thing was um, yeah I think I forgot that one maybe that's better because this is already getting very long and I have no no idea if you're still listening or watching or if even if I got this video to you so yeah um, I hope you're doing well I hope you're healthy and all your loved ones are safe and I hope we all come through this very strange time of paradigm shifts and crises with a different look at the world maybe a more regenerative permacultural look because that can really help with a lot of the problems we're living in um, so yeah I love you and thank you for your great work I, I really like all your videos and your work in communicating those strange and complicated ideas I hope this has been interesting enough to catch your attention and I hope to see you soon. Take care.